Good evening, New Bedford guys. Chris Rosendi is back for episode two of the summer. Uh, I don't even, we're, we're pretty good and established at this point. Got some great guests tonight. Uh, I'm going to chop it up a bit, do a little free form towards the end of the show. Uh, first, I want to start off with uh, this past weekend, Father's Day. Father's Day is probably one of my favorite days, especially in Facebook land. Uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas. Especially these days where you start seeing all these people fighting and arguing on Facebook. I mean, it's like uh, WrestleMania out there. But it seems to be that Father's Day, Mother's Day, you see some great photos out there of parents with their kids and barbecues and restaurants. Well, on Father's Day, we, we get forced to grill for the most part, and the moms get the, uh, the nice restaurants. I enjoy grilling, so it worked out. But Father's Day to me is, is huge. Uh, it's one of our biggest uh, responsibilities that we're tasked with as human beings is to raise a child. And from days of infancy up until their teens, their formative years, you have a huge responsibility as a father. You've got to give them choices and let them fail in life and learn from their experiences. But also know that your yeah, children are always watching you. Uh, I do it all the time. Uh, I slip up. And it's, you know, and it's not the curses. It's just, you know, sometimes bad behavior, bad habits. Uh, they pick up on it. And they're going to they're gonna carry on, you know. They're going to they're gonna see that and think it's normal. The way you shunned your wife off or you cut that guy off in traffic. They see that. So, you know, teach them respectable habits, you know. Go to the gym with them. Show them to be active. Hug them. Kiss them. Coddle them. Show them how to be kind. Uh, I leave my kid every day at school, and the last thing I say before I love you is, hey, be kind. Uh, you got to demonstrate how life is done, and you got to work today and think, what am I doing right this moment while that child is watching me? And make sure that it's something you'll be proud of, and that 20 years from now, when he's doing that same exact thing, you say, hey, he got that from me. That's my little spiel. Uh, like I said, it's one of my favorite, favorite things is being a dad. Uh, and I hope all you guys challenge yourself. And if you notice anything that I said that you need to change, that you do in front of your child, change it immediately. Don't change it tomorrow, whether it's smoking, cursing, not being nice to your wife. Like, don't let them see that stuff, man. Teach them to treat others kind and uh, healthy. Without further ado, June is PTSD Awareness Month. So what better to have a guest on that uh, is trying to raise money for veteran suicide. Uh, each year, I mean, we're dealing with thousands and thousands of suicides. Uh, it's the 10th leading cause of death in America. But in the veteran uh, world, we're dealing with 20 to 25 individuals per day, which translates to every 65 minutes, veteran is committing suicide in America. Uh, suicide is non-discriminatory. It, it doesn't care what you are. I've done shows on mental illness. We're actually working with South Coast Behavioral on a mental, illness, uh, mental illness health campaign to normalize it and just say, hey, people are sick, just like a cold, just like everything else. Let's do something to help out. We have the second annual Mission 22 pub crawl organized by a few great guys local to the area. One of them has joined us tonight. Donnie, thanks for coming out tonight. No problem. Thank you for having me. Uh, how did this start? Mission 22 is obviously a nationwide organization that you wanted to become a part of. Yep. Uh, it meant something to you. And now we're doing a pub crawl, which is, puts a little fun into it and gets people to raise some good money for something that needs to be taken care of immediately. So uh, actually, it started one night over a beer. My buddy, me and my uh, partner, Jared. One night after work, a little stressed out in the cases. So we have a routine. We get together. We go. We de-stress. We hang out. Um, and over a drink, we were like, uh, he mentioned that he had friends that were ambassadors. Uh, the way Mission 22 works is you actually do a little process. You become an ambassador for the organization. So there's training involved in order a little to be basic involved. paperwork, yes. There's, uh, you know, there's guidelines you have to follow. So Absolutely. once you go through all that, you become an ambassador. Uh, he knew of somebody who was doing it, and he said, hey, you know, I think we should do it. You know, we, we want to get involved. We want to help all the veterans. We want to help the guys out. So we did it, and then we said, well, what can we do? We said, what can we possibly do that would be uh, that two guys could put together somewhere downtown, that's a good time, and most importantly, be able to get other veterans and other people together 
Okay. Um, without a lot of fuss, without any money, because we want, and it makes it happen, where 100% of all donations goes right to Mr. 22. There's no overhead. We don't take a cut. There's no uh, admin fees, nothing like that. No, so no organization we, we kept necessary. that in mind. Yes, we kept it in mind, and that's how we came up with a pub crawl. Nice. Uh, last year, you uh, was the first annual. Yes. Uh, came into a little controversy, but it worked out, right? Yep, it was just a bunch of did. good guys trying to raise a little money. It did. And it did. Uh, how much money did you end up raising? Uh, just under $9,000. There was one check for about $8,500, I believe, and another, there were a couple more that came trickling in. And that surpassed our goal of $2,200. That's crazy. That's what st- it started out with. We wanted to do 50 tickets. We said if we can get 50 people together, buy some tickets. We said $22 a ticket times 50, that's like $1,100. And we yeah. figured, hey, you know what? If we raise another grand or two, we said twenty two hundred dollars was uh you know that was our goal that was our lofty goal and then we blew it completely out of the water in every way. So you know what that means? What's the goal this year? Oh well, we're gonna break ten. We're definitely gonna break ten grand this year. You think? Oh yeah, I have, I have no have doubt. Have you picked up sponsors? Uh no. So what happens is we don't have any. Um, we haven't had any direct sponsors that come on and give us like monetary donations to help us out. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a few that have you know have written checks right to Mission Twenty Two through us, which is awesome. Uh, the way we've been able to generate a lot of, you know, a lot of money, a lot of, you know, stir is basically where we get uh, raffle items. So okay. we go to a lot of local businesses. It's all local, basically. Um, a lot of generous, generous people around in the area. As soon as you give the pitch to them, they open right up. Um, this is one of those causes where everybody knows somebody that's affected by mental illness, as you mentioned already. Yeah. Uh, by suicide or a veteran. Everybody knows a veteran. Somebody has a family or a friend or a coworker. So as soon as you start putting those words together, it immediately clicks. They open right up. Um, and then we explained to them that it's all raffle items. Okay. So the tickets, actually day of, you get tickets, so you get food and t-shirts for the ticket itself, and then everything else is for the raffle items. So where do you get the tickets? Uh, myself and my partner, Jared, we actually fly all throughout. Uh, we have our Facebook page, which has our contact info on there. It's okay. uh, New Bedford Mission 22 Pub Crawl. We'll link it out. Yep, link it out. Because we don't want people to leave this yep, of show course. to go over there Of right course. And then, uh, and then day of as well. So as well. day of, we'll be there. How so much tickets cost? Uh, $22. Mission 22, 22 bucks. Yep, that's, no what, brainer. that's what we're doing. And we're already at, as of right now, we're already at 200 tickets. Wow. Yeah, we did uh, We did 200 pre-sale tickets. We figured, you know, if 175 of that show up, um, then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. That's awesome. And then more of the day off. All right, I'll do a challenge. I'll buy two tickets, and whoever shares tonight's podcast uh, show, uh, New Bedford Guy will go through, and we'll pick one randomly and uh, get you some tickets to... The pub crawl Saturday. Sunday. Sunday, excuse me. So Sunday, if you share tonight's show, guys, uh, we'll go back, look, and we'll randomly pick one viewer uh, who shared this for two tickets, and uh, we'll meet up and uh, get you your tickets. Um, now, are you still taking donations as far as for raffle items? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. In fact, as we're getting ready to prep the show, I just got a text message with a photo of, a, uh, of another gift item. Just, uh, just a few minutes ago, all the way up until Sunday. We're not at Bashful, um, which are very gracious. Even when we're out there asking people if somebody can do something, that's awesome. It's amazing. If they can't, that's fine. We appreciate the support either way, and it would take anything. I mean, absolutely anything. Anything new. <laughs> well, unless it's a collectible. So Of, of course, yep. Yeah, they'll take some like antique baseball cards or whatever, stuff I like actually, that. I uh, actually, so. in, in lieu of that, there's actually a hammer right next to you, John, right over there. If you can pass that to me, I should have grabbed it before. I actually brought it's right one. right next to Chris. Uh, this is actually pretty cool. This is kind of unique. We try to step it up a little bit to uh, to make unique items. This year, uh, a fellow veteran actually reached out to me and said, "Hey, uh, how about blacksmithing?" It's a little twenty-two right there. Yeah, little twenty-two. Uh, yep, a gentleman named Nick. He uh, he reached out and uh, he says, "Hey, he says if I could get some blacksmithing lessons, would you know would you be?" Interested? I said, "Of course." I said that'd be amazing. So he was able to finagle with uh, Freetown Historical Society, where they're actually doing uh, eighteen hours of blacksmithing. And they provided a hammer. He went out, he got a hammer, he got an apron. Uh, all you need is iPro, and then it's 18 hours. It's, I think it's like six Saturdays, three hours a day. They have a forge. That's pretty cool. They have the anvil, like forging fire on TV. Yeah. You could do it. You literally, you know, that's so, a handmade. Yeah, it's, and, that's, and this, like I said, this uh, the emblem as you just showed right there, the little 22, that's, uh, that was burned right in there. Anything, It's guys. awesome. Uh, we had Helena from the uh, Immigrants Assistance Center last week. Maybe Vivac can donate some sewing lessons like we talked about last week. Uh, I could use some. Uh, I got some some shirts to take care of. Uh, so you're at twenty two dollars. Again, share this uh, tonight, and we will pick someone randomly. I'll give you two tickets, um, and then also donations continue 
All the way up until Sunday. Yep. All the way. Facebook page again is? It's uh, New Bedford Mission 22 Pub Crawl. Mission 22 Pub Crawl. Great. Yeah. Um, I'll actually uh, got to talk to Mario. Speaking of Mario, uh, tonight's podcast, guys, and uh, show sponsored by Cask and Pig. Cask and Pig in South, I mean, North Dartmouth, excuse me. Great spot. Always, always, always are they, uh, we can go to them and ask for donations for stuff. They always are given to the community. They did. Did they? They did. Yes, they did. Of course they stepped See, up. Yep. But I mean, uh, Mario stepped Cask up. Cask and Pig, Cask and, and, Pig uh, and, and Pasta House Pasta out in Fairhaven. Both of them stepped up immediately. Same thing. The perfect example of we walked in there, you know, meet the manager on staff cases, pitch it to him within 10 seconds to say, yep. I'll tell you what. I Whatever we can Mario do for you guys, for we'll, we'll help you out. Yep. I ask for Mario all the time, and it's like, I feel bad. Uh, Almost like taking advantage. But it's, yeah, but the guy's good cause, coming through, man. Generous so, guy. And I always tell guy. people... Cask and Pig and Dartmouth Pasta House always go and support food. local businesses that have great food and that support their community. What else you got? Um, yeah, so actually along with that, I know that um, you mentioned there was some controversy last year, so we tried to tailor ourselves to make it a little bit, a little bit easier. This year we actually have the New Bedford Police Union. Uh, they actually donated their bus. So we actually have a bus on standby for the last four or five hours with two volunteers to actually give people rides home. So, so anybody big, who lives in the uh, city. Black and with a blue stripe. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to actually be on standby. We have two gentlemen gracious enough to volunteer. So that's going to be uh, awesome. give rides home. We have Uber on standby, cabs. Um, that's that's all there. That's all we, we it take needs care. to be done. That's awesome. Yes, just to make sure. I mean, we had no problems last year with zero incidents. But we want to make sure that we're, everybody's safe, have a good time. I did share uh, a John Seed uh, ad on my uh, show page. John's a, an attorney who specializes in drunken driving there cases. There you go. Yep. So you don't want to visit John C. Definitely. Guys. You definitely don't want to visit him. Uh, but if you do need a good uh, drunk driving attorney, you deserve a kick in the butt for drunk driving in the first place and whatever comes your way. But at least you'll have a good attorney in John if you need him. Uh, so you got Ubers. We have donations. What else you got? Anything else? Uh, yeah, no, so uh, we're going to have food. Like I said, we're going to be food. Actually, uh, this yeah. year we stepped up a little bit. Uh, so our five stops, which is Rose Alley, Slante, then Moby Dick, over to Poor Farm, and then finally the Greasy Luck. Uh, this year, Rose Alley, uh, Slante, and also Greasy Luck are all going to provide food. We also have food from Two Sisters. They're nice. going to, uh, yep, Casola Sandwiches. Oh, They're going to put together a plate for lovely. us. Yep, yep, awesome. Um, Slante and now that's was part of the stuff. ticket you show part the, of the ticket so what we're going to do is you're going to show the ticket day of when you bring, you have to have a ticket with you okay and you get yeah. one place you get to eat at uh, when, when every spot you go to as long as you have that ticket you can take a plate or oh, so a you can pizza just buffet eat and... yep wow there's going to be pizza buffet over at Slante um, Slante also put together a, a full menu for us yeah this year they put together and it was all on Facebook as well so they put together a full menu for us where if you buy one drink it's a $5 special they have steak tips they have uh, chicken Caesar wraps Full blow meals with sides for Even five if you don't bucks. Drink, guys, go grab yep. a coke and eat. Oh, definitely go grab a water. Come on, yeah. grab a coke. Something like that. The case is just hang out, support the cause. That is the point. I just want to hop on that. That's definitely the point where I know that. No, it's it's a fun the pub car pot. Yeah, it's for the pub car or whatever. But it's, it's like really don't about get out. getting guys. It's a together. Sunday. You got to work in the morning, so don't get too crazy. Yeah. But uh, be responsible, raise some money, and uh, mission twenty two happening this Sunday. One o'clock downtown. One o'clock it starts. Be sure, be sure, be sure to plan accordingly. There will be rides, but plan on Ubers, plan on utilizing the service provided by the New Bedford Police Union. Um, anything else? That's it. That's, That's it. it. And donate, guys. Donate. Please donate. If you do have it in your heart to donate an item or you want to contact Don, go on his page. We'll link it. And uh, you can ask him, hey, maybe you can run to Best Buy and just grab a DVD player or something that you can donate. If you have no idea, there's one right there. Uh, Don, thank you for uh, what you're doing. Thank you very much. Uh, Appreciate it. It is a great cause, uh, mental illness. We did spotlight it, and we are still going to continue to work on it on this show. Appreciate it very much. Uh, I have friends who suffer from uh, mental illness and uh, family members, PTSD too. Um, so I want to make sure that we're taking care of people. Lift them up, guys. Lift them up. Be kind. Like I said, show your kids that you're doing something for your community and someone other than you. And uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, tonight's show, again, sponsored by the Cask and Pig. Mario over at the Cask and Pig. Another, another guest and another person he's helping out, another organization he's helping out. Take a minute. Check out this great, great dish provided to you by the Cask and Pig in Dartmouth. Hi, guys. Uh, Richard Sullivan here from the Cask and Pig again. Uh, here we are with a lobster roll that we're going to do. 
we do two sizes here. Uh, we do a quarter pound and a half pound. Today we're going to present with uh, a half pound lobster roll on a brioche bun, all right? Get our bread fresh made from the maca and stuff on a daily basis. The butter. Very simple. Little secret blend that we have here. We're gonna check back up on our brioche roll. A little bit of spring mix. that with a little bit of microgreen. That's it, lobster roll. Hi New Bedford Guide, it's Callie from Cask and Pig. Today I'll be showing you how we make our grilled pineapple mojito that will be on our new summer cocktail list. First we start with some fresh cut limes, fresh cut pineapple, and fresh mint. To that, we add some fresh squeezed lime juice, simple syrup, and then our Bacardi rum. We're going to muddle that so that way you get all the natural flavors of these ingredients. And we're going to add our ice and give that a good shake. Strain that over fresh ice. We always strain that way you get the uh, the flavors of all those fresh ingredients, but not the actual mint involved. And we top with soda water. And that is our fresh grilled pineapple mojito that will be on our summer cocktail list. Wonderful, wonderful restaurant. Great drinks. I actually had that pineapple mojito. Very, very good cask and pig down in uh, South Dartmouth. Hey guys, I just got turned on to uh, this smile.amazon.com thing. Um, it's, it's amazing. I mean, my wife spends a ton of money on Amazon. I think everybody in America does at this point. Uh, but th with this smile.amazon.com, it's a website operated by Amazon with the same products, prices, nothing changes. You just have to sign into it. You can actually pick your... Uh, a foundation, an organization, charitable donation, uh, I mean organization of your choice uh, that you can have money donated to by each purchase. It's, uh, it's only a half a percent that goes to that, but it's better than nothing. I mean, if you're going to order off Amazon, it's a no-brainer to sign up for this and support an organization. Our organization at the Rosendi's household is the Help Save Foundation. Jen Blum, mm -hmm. domestic violence, uh, she was my guest last week. Her and I are going to start a podcast here in another week or so. Uh, dealing with domestic violence and uh, if you want to support her foundation which I highly recommend do so but there's a list you punch in whatever one you want to support you can do mission uh, 22 is on there as well and you can raise some money while just doing your normal thing it's not as easy you have to literally make sure you have it signed in correctly and uh, once you do that it's just like shopping on Amazon except you are helping support a foundation of your choice do it, do it, do it. It takes no time and it helps out people. Money is everything when you deal with nonprofits. Tonight's guests for round two of tonight's uh, show, uh, we have Frank Durant, who is running for county commissioner, uh, and also my friend Christopher Burrell, who ran for school committee. Chris is not currently running for anything, but he's a pillar in the community. He's still involved in the community. And I want to have a guy like Chris on more often. We're going to turn this show into a show and tell on how adults can speak to each other about politics at times. I mean, I, I spoke about Facebook only being good on Father's Day, Mother's Day, and Christmas. And uh, it gets a little 
hectic out there <laughs> where people are arguing a lot on Facebook about politics. It's ugly right now. And, you know, as good as Facebook is, I mean, we're doing shows like this and bringing awareness to the community. It also has its downfalls where people are really getting nasty with each other. So Chris is going to join in. He's going to help me, uh, you know, interview our next guest. But he's also we're also going to chop it up at the end and deal with hard issues. Uh, you might want to catch on to this one because I know he's very well informed. I hope to learn something from him tonight about the immigration crisis going on in Texas right now. We're also going to touch upon some other stuff that I know he's really uh, into, uh, universal health care. Hopefully we can get there and maybe some... Uh, schooling like how we're going to deal with schools and the outrageous numbers and the prices of college at this time and maybe you know with frank the reason why i brought that up is because frank's run for county commissioner and a big part of his job as commissioner will be the bristol agricultural school and those who have watched in the past know that i'm a proponent of uh trade school and i want to get that going again i want new bedford high to actually start offering it i don't want Vogue to be the only show in town and then bristol aggie to be in the same for that certain you know sector of the job I want all schools to offer these things. I want kids to learn how to use their hands again. And, you know, it seems like I know a bunch more people, and I'm not turning down college and saying it's terrible and it's not worth it or whatever, but a lot of people I know are pretty damn successful being tradespeople, plumbers, and stuff that's not going away. You're always going to have a toilet. You're always going to need a house. You're always going to have wires running through your home, at least electrical wires at this point. Uh, we don't need a modem and cable anymore. Everything's wireless on that thing. But you're going to need these trades. You're going to need a mechanic, whether it's an electric car or a gas-propelled motor. We're going to need these trades, guys. And I'm a big, big, big proponent of and farms, you know, stuff like that that we're going to learn with Frank right now. But we're going to touch upon all these issues right now. With no further ado, enough of me. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of tonight's show. You guys are sick of hearing me. <laughs> Frank Durant, thank you, Frank, for coming on Thanks tonight. for having me. Thanks for having me. So much Frank, to talk about. Where do we start? Uh, we're going to start with the county commission. Okay. And we're going to get through that because once we get into the rabbit hole of politics, <laughs> we're not going to get out. Exactly. There's no escaping, okay? <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, Chris had talked to me, what, two months ago? He said, hey, man, you got to have this guy Frank on. Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were, it was a Democratic City Committee. We had, must have had four or five candidates there. Um, some of them put you to sleep with this guy. And I, I wasn't expecting it either because for the longest time I thought, let's just do away with county government entirely in Massachusetts mm -hmm. and just kind of blew me away. And uh, the reach out to you. Yeah, no, he Appreciate instantly is like, hey, go interview this guy. And I, I, you probably felt like I was ignoring you, but mm -hmm. oh, just oh, time, yeah. time yeah. comes and goes and you've got people. And... Now, county commission. County commission, uh, tell us what the commissioner does. There's three of them. Yep. along with the county treasurer, mm -hmm. and I know that they're tasked with the buildings and 130 employees throughout the county. Pretty much. What is, what is your description on what you're running for and why are you doing it? Well, that's the thing. A lot of people, I'll introduce myself and they'll say, good for you. What are you running for? Because it's a position a lot of people haven't heard about, even though it's been around since 1685. Before we even had a country, there were county commissioners here in Bristol County. Uh, in a nutshell, we're landlords or overseers for the courts that are in the county, along with the Register of Deeds buildings, and like you mentioned, Bristol Aggie. Uh, it's a shame that people don't know who their county commissioner is, what the county commissioner does. But when it comes to Bristol Aggie, where most of the budget goes, uh, people don't know it's a county County, county property. It's county school. And it is a gem in Massachusetts, in my opinion. It's the best agricultural school in all of New England. And, you, you know, you're talking about how uh, we used to have guidance counselors, and we got rid of those about 20 years ago. So it used to be at the high school level, we'd inspire a student, and we'd pick up a trade, or like, you know, I want to become an accountant. I want to study political science. Uh, now kids are going into uh, college to get inspired, and they're putting themselves into 100000 plus in debt, and hopefully by the time they're 22, they actually know what they want to do, where we should actually rewind that four years before and say, well, listen, it's not, college isn't for everybody, even yeah. though 90, pu 90 plus percent of the population is going into a two-year or four-year institution. It's the greatest scam of our, uh, yeah. of our parents' generation, I think, is to force people to, you have to go to school to be somebody. Mm -hmm. And I say scam only because of the fact that the number of uh, the price is skyrocketing. Oh, it's an investment now more than ever. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, mean how much does a college education cost? And I have the chart somewhere mm. where. I mean, in state's over twenty grand right now, and that's just right. the, the. You used to look at a state school yeah, like yeah. in the eighties, costing. Yeah, I mean, twenty five hundred bucks was, a year. I was a kid. I remember my dad and I looking at Syracuse, and there was it was twenty thousand for a private, you know, and, and yeah. now you think you know two hundred thousand. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> easily. Yeah, easily. So. Yeah. Well, so, see, yeah. I, have, I have my phone out because my wife and I are expecting our first son. So we're out. The, the due date was yesterday, so the phone goes off. No, nope, I'm out of here. But I'm just saying, don't be like me. I stopped for a coffee on the way. My wife's like, I'll kill you. <laughs> Get to the hospital. <laughs> Coffee's important, though. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I, I bring that up because uh, we met with a financial advisor, and they say, listen, college is 25 grand a year now. For your son, 20 years down the road, you need $40,000 a year if you're going to start Absolutely. saving now. So that's a major $200,000 investment to say, go major in a, in a, in a field that there's going to be no jobs waiting for you. If you look at Bristol Aggie, um, the student body there, you have to interview to, to be accepted. And I, right now, the majority of students come from the Fall River area. But you have students coming from Attleboro, Taunton, all cities and towns, as well as outside the county. But if you look at not just the curriculum, but how we work with the student body, how they work with the student body. Um, every student is an ambassador, the way they communicate, the way they conduct themselves. And it's just like when you go out on the job, the way you present yourself, the way you look, the way you communicate with others. That's a big thing where you don't see that in public schools that often. And there's a sign of respect, but also a sign of being a professional. Once you leave the halls of that school, you're in the real world. And Bristol Aggie is an outstanding school just for that, let alone the curriculum that we have. These students get out of that, and they're right into the workforce. They go into a uh, college or university after, and they have the skills to be successful for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Well, the numbers, I mean, I looked at the uh, graduation rate, mm -hmm. uh, the MCAS, through the roof, all mm -hmm. of them. Um, I had it somewhere. I don't know, of course I lost it. Mm -hmm. uh, numbers don't lie, though. It's a safe, yeah, no, it's a safe it, environment. It's, it's a safe mm -hmm. environment. You're looking at... 100, close to 100% of everybody graduates in, in MCAS, which is unheard of. No. Mm -hmm. uh, and the ratio is 14 to 1 at this point. Yep. I mean, it's a no-brainer, guys. You're getting a good education. It's an alternative to the grind. I mean, I'm not turning down other schools again. Mm -hmm. There's a place for everybody. You know, Not everybody's going to be a rocket scientist, mm -hmm. and not everybody's going to be a historian. But we are going to need <laughs> trades. What are some of the trades offered at Bristol Aggie? That Several trades. If you actually, you can uh, call up and ask for a tour, and they'll take you around all the curriculums, all the, all the buildings they have. And it's actually one of the reasons to get into the campaign and why, why I'm here. Uh, I'm running to reform county government. And a lot of people say, well, if you get in there, you're just going to vote to eliminate county government and let, let Boston and let the Secretary of State take it over. It's a county school and it works for a reason and I hate to see that become a state-run school and everything change. So one of the reasons why I'm running to reform is to keep Bristol Aggie going in the direction that it is. But when it comes to the full paint plan that you can see on my website, we need to improve representation, communication, and also fiscally the money that we get that we, we basically rely on taxpayer money. We currently have investments that have not worked out yet. And then the fourth part of the plan is actually having a voice. We have uh, a form of government that people don't even know is in existence. So to really communicate of uh, the benefits of Bristol Aggie, what we do for the courts, what the Register of Deeds does for the northern part of this county, um, I could talk for hours, but like I said, I'm trying to give you the bullet points of yeah, yeah, I'm running of for. Um, where do you want to start? Well, first of all, I, I want to know why something, it's such a gem and it's hidden. Why isn't it well known? What, like, are you going to plan on like growing it? Like, is that your, mm -hmm. because I was looking it up, I'm like, Man, it's so obscure, and nobody yeah, yeah. really knows about it. Like, you don't think of Bristol. No, Aggie, you hear about it every now and again, and mm. then it's just kind of like, like when you were down running for school committee. Yeah. Did you like? Well, so I was I was doing city council, but um, uh, city but council. But I'm a, it's not my teacher, but um, uh, no, I mean, it, it, you hear about it, and then it kind of just like goes away, and then you think. Um, I think what it is is you, when you when you think about the trades, you just automatically think about Volk. Um, mm. it's, it's that's what know, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's a great right. school, and and but yeah, I mean, this is. I mean, the more you learn about it, you're like, wow, we really do have this this absolute gem. This is perfect. Is that Fortune. something you want to do? You want to grow it, or do you want well, to keep it where in the direction that it's in right now? Keep it in the direction it is, just for the leadership and how we are. Um governing body. But right now, Bristol Aggie did vote to get a $104 million loan from the state to rebuild Bristol Aggie for the first time since the 1970s. Wow. The building's been around since the 1920s, but also Boston Latin is one of the best public schools in the country, and that's a very old building. So location does, does matter, but at the same time, the quality of teachers that we have there, the quality of the curriculum. Uh, so right now, with the improvements of having, having a new school down there in Dighton, you will add probably another 100, 150 plus students to the, to the student body. Awesome. So it's not going to be a huge, just try to get them 30, 40 students into a classroom. So we still want to keep small classrooms, but also keep the curriculum that we have really the the focal point that you can go to a voc tech and go to a trade school, but what are you really learning to be qualified to be in the workforce? It's got the bad reputation of it. it's a farming school. You want to be a farmer, go there. It's like this much landscaping. There are programs where students are working with amphibians and reptiles, and they're actually working in programs where there are jobs waiting. They're looking for qualified people throughout the whole country, if not the world. So when you see a student want to major in political science because they want to run for Congress one day, 
there's more dream there than reality of like, should we be teaching botany, should we be teaching political science, or should we really have a curriculum that we're teaching students who are going to be able to, to work in a field where they're going to be in demand. Um, the big thing, a uh, point two, is communication. Uh, I was in middle school back in the late 80s, early 90s. I remember they popped a VHS tape and we watched a five minute video of if high school's not for you, there's Bristol Aggie. And we still have some video components to promote the school at the middle school level. But with communication of how we run our meetings, how we update our website, uh, we can talk for an hour on how we need to improve communication, not just to educate the community about what the county commissions are doing, but also the gem, like we said, of Bristol Aggie. Um, the majority of people come from Fall River, but it's open to anybody in the state, and we really need to, I don't want to say advertise more, but really rebrand it that it is a great school, and you know, that it's an option for students who are not going to be, the high school level is not right for them. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like the idea of bringing it a little more, because you still do have that, it's a farming school. <laughs> <laughs> You do, you know, and, yeah. and if that's, as a commissioner, mm -hmm. that obviously, I mean, you have other things to do, like we can talk about the buildings and all that stuff. Sure. But I mean, in starting back in 97, it started, like the county started getting neutered by right. Weld at the time, and then Patrick mm -hmm. with the Sheriff's Department in 10, kind of just like, psh, and mm -hmm. they kind of left the county commission with Bristol Aggie, registered deeds, mm -hmm. And which I want to talk to you about that as well because that needs to get updated severely at times. Mm -hmm. I think you know we've had issues. Depends which one you're talking about. New Bedford. Uh, I forgot who my attorney had to. Anyway, it was. I don't know. You know, trying to find those old ledges from the 1960s. Exactly. Exactly. You know, that's something that you could touch upon. What your sure. plan is to get that going? You know what mm -hmm. I mean. Um, well, a lot of people don't realize that William Weld wanted to take over the Bristol County Commission. Very few people know about this. I've been trying to tell people uh, they didn't have enough money for payroll. So that's the only reason for the last 21 years that Bristol County Commission is still being uh, run by three commissions down here in uh, the, the Taunton, Fall River, New Bedford area. So there's been time to reform ourselves. What is going to be the vision? What is the goal? What are the responsibilities of the county commissioners? And you write about the Register of Deeds. The, well, the issues I'm running on is fair representation. Uh, Maria Lopes, who served on the board till 2014, she resided in Taunton. And since then, we've always had representation representing in both three regions, the northern, the central, and the south. Uh, since 2014, all three commissioners reside south of, uh, of uh, Battleship Cove. So you have, really have an unfair base of representation. You have somebody from New Bedford, Fairhaven, Fall River, but nobody north of, uh, like I said, Battleship Cove. We forget and about Attleboro. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to cut the Rhode Island, yeah. dude. Well, here's a question for you. What region, what area generates the most revenue for, for the county commission, for, for Bristol County? Oh, I'd say that region. The Seekonks, the Attleboros. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people I mean, Seekonks the largest growing in the uh, area. Seekonk, Rehoboth, Dighton, yeah. is, and also Raynham. So you have a lot of small communities. I live in Norton, Mansfield, East, and a lot of people are moving from the South Shore and Metro West to come over there. Oh, yeah. So even though Fall River, New Bedford has a large population, the large revenue is coming in from the Register of Deeds. You have a lot of lawyers going into those buildings every day trying to get uh, land information, permits information. And uh, to have nobody in the North representing really is unfair. It is. Mm. I agree with you 100%. Now, Chris, and yeah. you want to jump in on? No, I'm, 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 I'm still listening. I'm, still mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by that. I really. Yeah, I was, like, I was, I started like just dumping like, into yeah, the, jumping yeah. into this, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. little. Well, I'll jump around. I got county one. dive of stuff I didn't know. You know, I used yeah. to work at the sheriff's department, okay. and it was prior. I left when it was still part of the county. You know? Yep. We had the best insurance. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was awesome. You know, we had mass, <laughs> Blue Cross, Mass of Health. It was ridiculous. Well, a, lot of, a lot of people assume the sheriff's office is still. Controlled by the county commission, that has been the case. Now he Patrick wishes it was. He, I mean, Tom is getting neutered by you know budget-wise by everybody, and he's right. the largest. I mean, mm -hmm. we're going to touch upon that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah we'll with the immigration because he gets. I mean, he one of his biggest complaints. He generates a ton of money, mm -hmm. and they just take it and don't give it back to him. And then they want to say like he has a mental health issue. They have the money <laughs> to pay for it. You know, um, we talked about budget. Um, on average, a county commissioner works five to six hours a month. So you have an administrative job, six hours a month. If you had to hire somebody to work six hours a month, what would you pay them? Well, I can tell you, you guys, each commissioner gets paid over 35 a year. Yes. So for six hours, and again, available 24 seven. That so sounds a little meaty. That's exactly. Well, I'm not, I'm not running for the paycheck, but okay. if, I, if I do get elected, I'm limiting that salary for myself. I can't speak for anybody else who works for the commission. But if you're paying somebody $35,000 a year to show up to two to three meetings a month, I serve on the planning board right now in the town of Norian. People serve on the finance committee, school committees, town committees, town councils. They're volunteers. They don't even have the money to pay for babysitters so they can go if they're a single school parent. committee in New Bedford. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Right. Those guys. Yeah. So, yeah. 
And you're in charge of budgets, like uh, the Bedford uh, school budget my, in Attleboro was over um, 65, 70 million back in 2006. So we're in charge of balancing that budget, presenting it to the city council, creating policy, working with curriculum, and they're all volunteers. So why should you, the taxpayer, invest $35,000? It used to be 65 at one point. So that's one of the issues of the campaign. Where is the money being invested? I brought up at the New Bedford City Council meeting that we have a printing press since 2000. And I was the first one to actually ask, does anybody know we actually have a county-owned printing press? Nobody raised their hand. And it was right down the street. This is available county-owned press basically to give discounts to any municipality or anybody who needs printing, uh, printing needs. So <laughs> ma <laughs> magic, magically, after we had the video, we said, listen, the county website has been updated in four months. They had a vote in February for the $104 million loan. No one even knew about it. And they didn't post the, the notes of the meeting on the website. So this got back to the county commission. The first time in four months, they decided to update the website in April. But also the first time in 18 years, they decided to actually create a Wix website to promote the printing press. And they're considering actually having a sign out in front of the building to show that we actually have a printing press. So the campaign has done some good. Very good. Right. But at the same but time, But they still got to use a Wix. I, I, could, I could talk to you for hours about that. Is this step in the right direction? Yes, but you have a 90,000 year investment for printing press that should be generating a quarter of a million yeah. dollars. I mean, you got, you got a printing press and you got, you know, 105,000 at the minimum on three commissioners mm -hmm. and another 75 to 80,000 on a treasurer, right. which is a part time job as well. It's not full time. And I like the guy, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot of money. Well, one Let's of the call things, it what it is. I mean, that's yeah. a full year salary. Sure. You know, that's a way above the and median. That, and that, this, guy, sure. that guy, too, you know, kind of has a history of, uh, you know, serving on the city council, votes himself a raise, you know, has some gap where he's like, well, if you don't like it, you can vote me out. They vote you can out. say his name. I won't. And, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm not here to make uh, enemies. You know, I'm not here uh, to uh, land. Well, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't personally know the guy. I mean, I just, yeah. it just is one of those things where it does kind of seem like. It punched oh, me in the gut when I saw the money. salaries. It's a lot of money for hours. Hours. not a lot of work. And, you know? I, and I hand it to you. I really do. I mean, I was like, I hate to bring this up because I want to like. Hmm. But he came out and said, I don't want it. Yeah, yeah. eliminate. That's great. That's awesome. My wife is People I'm all about limiting government. Like. I think government ruins everything. That's just me. We'll <laughs> talk about that. Uh, and uh, and it's awesome to hear people say, you know, I'm going to be a statesman, so you know, a citizen statesman. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's my guy. That you've you've already worked on for free in your community on sure. boards, planning boards, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's a commendable thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I do feel like people should be compensated. Mm -hmm. In somewhat, you know, whether it's whatever stipends or whatever, but mm -hmm. I mean, to have a salary to work six hours a, a month is crazy. Right. Well, it's it's part of the reform. You have to ask yourself. You have people on both sides of the party. They made a career of being a politician, and you got to ask yourself. Okay, you've had Ted Kennedy for forty years. You had John McCain for forty years. Both brought value to the table, but at the same time, I'll be out there getting Sanchez, knocking on doors, and talking to people. Everybody I talk to, Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, we're all for term limits. I don't know anybody who's against term limits. I don't know anybody who says, no, we need to keep money in politics. Whoever raises the most money should be, should be the elected official. No one's saying that. So you'd be surprised that the, the people want common sense politics. What is, are they getting a fair wage? Is, is there fair representation? Are you communicating to the public? These are basic things where, sadly, you have a half a million people in Bristol County, and the majority of people don't even know that that form of government, even county governments, even exists. A lot of people so, in Bristol County don't know a lot exists. <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, in Bristol County. We have, yeah. we're in a, we're in a, I'm going to digress, so I have to, because I can't. It drives me nuts. We're in an information state. We're walking around with supercomputers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. The world, the, all the knowledge in the world in our pocket. And people are dumber than they've ever been, yeah. dude. Like, they don't even know how, like, oh, how do you, like... Angry birds. Mm. Challenge, yeah. Uh, you know, primaries. We need to discuss primaries. They're like, oh, so we get to vote for him, too? Because I was, you know, I had endorsed the candidate. We talked well, about Well, I mean, you think about show. that, though, right? Like, and not to, not, but, I mean... We've done such a focus on, you know, I mean, in the 80s, you start getting these international, uh, you know, comparisons between the U.S. and Japan and Taiwan and stuff, and it's like, oh, we're falling behind, right? Well, the education systems are very different. They're only testing the, you know, the very elite students, and we're testing everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So then it, the, the big pu push is on STEM, and we start to kind of minimize, you know, history and social studies and civics. And so you've had now two generations going through American education that have, you know, you know, yeah, they're getting biology and, and chemistry pushed on them, but they have no idea how the day-to-day how -day government works. Hmm. And, uh, and that's, that's not just a mistake. I mean, I, I, I don't I I can't know the Pythagorean the theorem, but, you know, I never learned how to do my damn taxes or know that I have yeah, to yeah, pay yeah, taxes. Like, actually, practical. Like 
And maybe that's something you when you get voted on, because I'm gonna I like this guy already. Term limits. Mm -hmm. Working for, for like not for free, but say, hey man, I don't need this. You know, doing it for the right reasons, and uh, bringing stuff to 2018. I like also, it. we should be teaching civics again. So these are things that well, it's not on the test. So why are we why are we educate? Uh, standardization to... is the, is the demise right. of of yeah, education. Mm. I mean, every kid's different. Exactly. Like mm. you and I can stand in a room and talk five minutes. Like I'm not capable of doing certain things. You can. Mm -hmm. It's like telling a dwarf, you, yeah, you can be a basketball player. No, you can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't work, <laughs> yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Like this, we all have our limits in life, yeah. and we you all know, can't be treated as just. You know, here's, here's like ranks in, a, in the military. Here you go. Mm -hmm. There's a line of people. You're all equal. No, we're not. No. What was it Muggsy Bugs? Uh, Muggsy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was what, like 5'6 or yeah, something. He was like 5'6. Like like I think he yeah. can slam it too. Uh, yeah, that was uh, Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to, Frank, you got five minutes to sell yourself. And then we're going to just chop it up for the last 20 and mm -hmm. we're going to get into the pit and we're going to dive into this rabbit hole. First question I get is what is county commission? The second is if you get elected, will you eliminate it? My goal is I want to reform it. We have space available at our court buildings and retro D buildings. They're vacant. We have office spaces that we can be renting out to local nonprofits and local groups. The county government should be involved with the community more than ever. Uh, besides being on the Christmas Endes show, we need to have a blog. We need to video record our meetings for the first time. We need to basically write into the newspapers, be on radio shows. We need to communicate with the public so we actually become relevant in the community. Um, streamlining the budget, but also having real fair representation by redrawing the map. But also, I hate to say we're going to rebrand Bristol County, but there's a lot of opportunities that county government can work with the state and generate more revenue outside of tax dollars. How many buildings do you have? That's a good question. We got two, three, four, five, so well, that's, that's a double, uh, double question. I think we have about nine different buildings. However, some of these buildings are owned by the state now. The New Bedford Courthouse, yeah. we're the landlord. We used to own that building. We gave it back to the state. So when you see the paint shipping, you're a landlord. It's like, put some new paint on that building. The foundation's cracking. They're trying to get uh, historical funding to rebuild, rebuild that the courthouse. I'm thinking if it's broken now, fix it and give Boston the bill. So when you have an absentee landlord, that's the worst kind of landlord. You want somebody Absolutely. to be out there and say, you know, invested. but you know, they'll say, we're in the black, we're in the black, we're not over because Middlesex had a, defaulted on a $5 million loan. William Well took them right over. But once again, we just took out a $104 million loan to rebuild Bristol Aggie. I'm all for the funding for the school since the 1970s. It's been 50 years trying to get funding for that school. Uh, however, there should have been an open forum. Uh, 20 people, one from each city and town, was invited to vote. Uh, 15 voted yes. Uh, three weren't even uh, there. Nobody was there to represent New Bedford. No one was there to represent Fall River, the two biggest cities. So there was no, hey, let's talk to the architect. Let's look at the blueprint. Let's have an open forum of ideas. No, simply like 20 people show up, let's vote. Okay, 13 people voted yes, let's take out the $104 million loan. So people blame the Democrats. It's 20 people for and, 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 and three commissioners are from New Bedford, Fall River, and then right. the other one from Fair. Like, it's just. Hmm. Well, there's a reason behind that, Chris, I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's you like pushing. Keep it quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's a I mean? lot of money. I've worked so. in the state, and there's a lot of people <laughs> making a lot of good money that just hide out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that, that's, 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 that's what that they do. Hey, hey you can't see you know, me. Like, Let uh, me just stay quiet yeah. over here, and right. you'll forget about me. Yeah. It's, it's a good investment. It's the right investment. However, you got Aber High School. They want $250 million. Durfee, another $250 million. Westport, $110 million. We're hoping they just took out $10 million to rebuild their roof. So you got over half a million dollars already in, in new tax, new loan. And now it's another 104, which is half. The state will pay half. We'll pay the other 50, 50, 54 million. Um, it's all about communication. People aren't even aware that the vote took place and that the loan is even happening. So that's your taxes. This will make you really upset now, Chris. Um, he, Chris actually asked me a question, is this a progressive or regressive tax? Because twice a year, every city and town gets a bill for the, from the county to say, this is your tax, pay it. I asked three different mis mis uh, municipalities, uh, two cities, one town, is this progressive or regressive? And they actually asked me to define that. I'm like, well, is it a flat tax? Or is it based on, like, say it's $30,000, $60,000, dollars salary, do you pay a dollar as opposed to two or three? No one can answer that question. They said, well, I think you should talk to Bill Galvin or the county commission for that. So these are treasurers, town managers, and head administrators who don't question the bill. They just pay it. So it's unfair to taxpayers, but it's also unfair that these are highly paid people who should know that, you know, someone from the public calls, it shouldn't be, I don't know. It should be, I should look into that and see exactly how each town by the population is, is taxed. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, amazed yeah, yeah, at yeah. that last. A lot of people, I, I hope you mm -hmm. hit rewind later and go yeah. over what just happened. Mm -hmm. um, I, that, that was at the point I was like, wow. All right, this, this matters. Right? That just blew my yeah. mind. Yeah, but that and the, right. and, the, and the school funding, you know, 140 million dollars. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. We're on the hook for, and you had 
you know, 20 people there? 20 yeah. people were invited, five communities weren't there. How do you get invited? That's a good question. See, I'm not on the county commission, so I really can't be the, the advocate to educate people. That's a lot but of damn money and a big decision for 20 that's, that's people. Right. $5 million, no transparency uh, you know, a person, a little more than that. Much. I mean, There's no transparency. Mm. No. And the bill is now just focused. It isn't broken up by 120th because Fall River has most of the students to the student body. They pay the majority up for the new school. Then would be New Bedford, then Twan. So, so it's the based towns on, are on the hook for their students. Based on the population so of the student body. So if, all right, so like mm -hmm. 20 kids from Dartmouth go. Right. It's a calculation on that 20. x per student mm -hmm. go gotcha right so it won't be because new Bedford is the largest population they would pay the bulk of that but very eno right. speaks very highly she watches uh on the on the uh show and podcast mm -hmm. and uh saves kids teachers are invested uh we were they were in new bedford at the time mm -hmm. and uh they said she said it rocked it was good for them it was mm -hmm. a great it's a great school i mean any talk about Vokes and you talk about these yeah. trade schools, man. Bon Bonnie and I are, sad, are. Man. It keeps people, it keeps people, mm. like, you just start yeah. teaching, like, tests all day long. Dude, right. by lunchtime, they're checked out. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm all about, like, let's give them kickball yeah, again. Yeah. I don't care how right. old you are. It's, oh, it's I mean, 20 minutes at, like, 10 o'clock. Go outside oh, yeah. and run around and do something. Like, mm. we should change, the, we should just flip it on its head. But I've seen students who would fail at Durfee, but then you put them in a different environment. Absolutely. Where they're just passionate. They're Absolutely. Showing, I've, seen, I've seen the quote-unquote bad kids. They're showing up to school early. Absolutely. They're, they're presenting themselves. They look forward to, to going to class and gaining the grade and proving themselves as well as other because people. Because they're engaged. Community. Exactly. You know, they're engaged. If you're just mm -hmm. sitting there, rah, 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 nobody wants to hear that crap. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't care how old you are. I want to touch upon the buildings one more time quickly. Sure. This is a city-owned building. Okay. And they're making good money on it. Mm. Are we thinking about doing something, maybe an innovation building? Is that something? In Absolutely. Our, in, we have space in, yeah. available. There are people who are nutritions. They rent out space in, in, a, in a private residency. You have a, I keep pronouncing it wrong, Serpit. They're in a house. We can move those people into the office spaces that we have available. Uh, you have Where a lot of area. Where are these spaces? They're in Taunton. Taunton. Yeah. So you have a lot of nonprofits. Uh, Bristol County uh, um, Commission of Women. Where, where Do they need an office? There's a lot of groups that are involved with the community. They're active members. Let's give them space available. And not only will it generate revenue, but it now reforms and actually rebrands what county government is awesome i'm gonna keep you on because mm -hmm. we are gonna go away from the focus being on frank for county commissioner mm -hmm. you want my vote dude yeah, yeah. i like it. Yeah, yeah. give me a guy that wants term limits give me a guy yeah. that says we need to get things up to speed mm -hmm. give me a guy who wants to give kids options we should do I mean, you know and, and uh you know especially here in new bedford i feel like having you know, there was that push to expand the, the mayoral term to four years. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a little bit of talk, it seemed like, at the election about maybe doing something for, you know, a, a referendum on, on term limits. We are doing it, Christian yeah. and I. All right, We're just trying to keep it quiet. All right, all right. I'm sorry to, so yeah. Mm -hmm. It hasn't gone away. I'm a huge proponent of it. Christian and I look at it and we say, if we could, uh, he, he, Christian Farland, he uh, did New Bedford Forward. He's yep. one of the main advocates behind that. And him and I bumped heads on that, like, he wanted it. I was against it. Yeah, I did. All I about two years, yeah, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, Change them yeah, like yeah. diapers, you know what well, I mean? Get them in and out, yeah. and you know, they start smelling like crap after a while. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. when you, and there, there wasn't a mechanism for a recall or anything. Like, so, I mean, if, yeah. you get, if you make a mistake, I mean, that's it. There's four years. Yeah, you you're know? done, dude. Um, so I, I, I wasn't in favor of it, but um, I definitely saw like the advantages to it, you know, having that continuity in the... But he's, him and I, yeah. disagreed, and you and I disagree on certain things, but now we're coming together, and uh, him and I are going to... Use that same, I'll help you. Whatever same, I do, yeah. same, same, same mechanism he did. Mm -hmm. Get out boots on the ground, and we're gonna try to get it on the ballot. No. We just don't want to get the. We don't want to push it too much because then the fight comes. Then the, the money comes pouring in. We don't really put yeah, money yeah. into this. This is yeah, grassroots, yeah. Yeah. and our dream is holy cow. New Bethesda's got term limits, and Farva sees that, and like, hey, we need to do that. Yeah. And then holy cow, Attleboro, and then Worcester, and then yeah. Framingham, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's statewide, and then Massachusetts got term limits someday. Yeah. 30 years from now, this little stupid thing blossoms into our state having term limits, I'll be happy. Oh, and it, it, it forces, you know, it, it, the, the, great, the benefit of it is, you know, politicians can at some point stop being politicians and start being right. leaders and, and, like, taking into account. Be like, leaders. Be, be, I'm really convinced, and I've said this before, that people don't get into politics for the wrong reasons, for the most part. For the most part. We have, mm -hmm. you know, you got good cops, yeah. bad cops, good teachers, yeah, yeah, bad right, teachers, right, right. good politicians, bad politicians. <laughs> I think they really go in with the heart. And I'm talking na nationwide. Once you get these, all right, why don't you come talk to us about this solar panel? 
Yeah. We're going to do a conference in Honolulu. We're going to put you up. We're going to come <laughs> here. And, yeah. Oh, we've got room for your family, too. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just pay for the flights, and we'll take care of you. But them, if they want to come, yeah. you can come. And it's five days. Right. The conference is for one day. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you yeah. are. After a while, you're like, hey, man, I want well, those solar panels. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, it, dude, it's, it's yeah. there. Cal- you, California you, is a great example of this. I mean, my, my party, you know, the, the, the California Democrats, they, were gonna, they had this, this line in the sand with net neutrality. We know we were gonna, not in California, mm-hmm. and they completely neutered the bill. And AT&T just poured all loads of, uh, you know, millions and millions of dollars into, into Democratic campaigns. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's a shame because uh, I think a lot of people – across the country, especially Democrats, were looking to California and saying, like, hold this line. This is an important issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and and big money won. Yep. And it's winning a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's winning a lot. Now, love, hate, somewhere in between like I am, Donald Trump, he's rocking the boat on both sides. There's Republicans <laughs> that hate his ass, and there's mm-hmm. Democrats that really hate him. Um, we're seeing the Republican Party getting shifted. You know, guys like Paul Ryan getting kicked out. Now they're telling yeah. them. Now McConnell's getting made fun of. Uh, so it's not just the left that hates them. The yeah. establishment yeah. hates them mm-hmm. on both sides. Uh, we had a huge, 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 huge. I'm a son of immigrants. My family came here the right way. Uh, my dad came when he was 17, 18 to this country, became a citizen. My grandparents became citizens. My mom came when she was a little younger. Um, and actually for years, Helen and I talked about it. My mom helped the Portuguese community get their citizenship uh, paperwork squared away with attorneys and all that stuff. It was like a side job for yeah. them. And, uh, but we have this huge issue right now down at the border. Uh, before we get into it, I'm going to come out and say anybody that uses kids as a weapon for politics, I, you're not a friend of mine. Uh, like I started the show off with, I'm a father. Mm-hmm. You're a father. You're going to be oh, a father yeah, yeah. tonight at 1 a.m. Yeah. The water's going to break. Yeah. That's my bet. 1 a.m. Maybe you're right, Chris. All right. Yeah. Uh, your phone hasn't gone off, so we got you. Mm-hmm. But we got these kids getting caged up. It's a big thing. Mm-hmm. It's been happening. Not to the level it's happening because of the new policy. Mm-hmm. But let's not, let's not lie to ourselves and say that it didn't happen. We have pictures yep. in 2014 mm-hmm. that were posed. Uh, about these kids uh, back when Obama was in. I posted a thing today on my page, on the Chris Rosendi Show page, uh, Vox article from 16. I like, I like Vox, but I haven't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah no, and I it was pretty good. It was, mm-hmm. like, it was like when the Democrats yeah. were pissed about it back then. Yeah. For mm-hmm. some reason, nobody figured it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, this all started off in 96 with the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act, signed by Bill Clinton. Uh, bundle of provisions, increased penalties, immigrants who had violated U.S. law. I had a cousin who was deported based on this. It was actually after 9-11, the Patriot Act, which kind of strengthened this. It was yep. another, the, after this passed, then we got that passed. We have a chart that Josh is going to put up that shows uh, throughout the years uh, deportations in America. Um, let me look at my computer because I'm not being fair right now to you guys. I mean, I think, okay. um, and, and if I recall correctly, Obama and I would imagine actually may still hold this just because Trump hasn't had enough time. But I mean, he he deported more individuals from this country than any president before him. He um, did, and people don't realize that. Like people, like oh, and I, like, I voted for Obama Trump, twice. Trump, Trump is on pace. Yeah. I voted for him once, and not the second. <laughs> time. Uh, Trump. A lot you, of people don't realize this. Him. I'm a, I'm a registered Democrat still. I was a Democratic delegate in Worcester twice. Uh, you voted for Obama in 08? Yeah. I would have thought McCain would have been like your guy. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I just would have assumed I haven't liked McCain since way back. What, like 2000? Yeah. I liked right? Obama. He's a war hawk, man. He's a globalist. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. You know, he's just like, No, that's fair. You know, he's, he's intertwined in the same yeah, fabric yeah, yeah. as Hillary Clinton in my mind, in my eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, you know, there's, that's just my thought on him. Obama came and, and said, I'm done with regime change. Yep. I'm done with... You know the Bush problem issues that we had. I saw kids dying. I saw innocent children in Iraq dying for the wrong reasons. And then Obama came and started droning the piss out of them too. And then he yeah. went to Syria and he went to other countries and doubled down on what he said he wasn't going to do. And that's why he didn't get vote my vote. Yeah. Um, and I thought Donald Trump would kind of do the same. You know, I think Hillary's a wallmonger. I think she, yeah, she's uh, she would have continued the regime change. That's her path. That's mm-hmm. that's where she's been. So she would never have my vote for other reasons as well. So this happened. You're right. Trump is 
his pace of deportation is way lower than Obama's at this point. But we got these kids in cages, Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're a very smart guy. Uh, I, want, I want to hear your take on this. Um, well, so I, I, um, I, I, I teach at a public therapeutic school, and I'm just absolutely having a blast. It, it is kind of, um, it was just by chance that I, I, I became a public, uh, public school teacher, and it was uh, by chance that I kind of came into this position. Um, but I've had a blast, and it's, it's been really eye-opening. And to see, you know, it, it, you know, to see how trauma, even as young as three or four, when you think that a lot of those memories haven't formed, to see how that still impacts kids uh, into their teenage years and then as adults, um, is, is really eye-opening. So, so you see my segue of the Father's Day introduction. Yeah, so I, no, absolutely. Yeah. And so that, I mean, when you were talking about that, you know, there, there's nothing that, that, like I'm a pretty kind of, you know, I, I joke a lot and, I, you know, I, living in Britain for a number of years, I kind of developed that, you know, dark, dry sense of humor or whatever. And, and uh, yeah, they, they, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. guys, good yeah, yeah. body mouths. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But there's nothing that, that really angers me more than, than you know, child neglect, child abuse. And, um, you know, and, and it, it's, it, it's hard to just, you know, and I'm glad that you're saying a cage because there was this debate about whether, you know, that was an appropriate term. And, and, and my wife, and, I, and, you know, you were talking about how your wife's your best friend. And, my, you know, I, I don't have a better friend than my wife. You know, I never will. You know, she was, she was kind of making the point. Look, you know, like if you look at the, 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 the Webster uh, definition, this is, you know, this is what it is. Even, you know, prisoners of war, they, you know, they refer to those apparently as cages. But, but beyond that, I mean, it's, it's, it's fencing all along the sides, on top, and you got these kids in there. And, you know, call them That's cages. the processing center. Yeah. Those yeah. are the processing centers. Okay, yeah, to yeah, be so, fair. So fair, fair yeah, yeah. And there's a reason why they use those two. A lot of it has to do with manpower and money. Yep. It's a cheap thing rather than putting up physical walls. Yep. Mm -hmm. And with a cage, I, I, was, I watched a Border Patrol yep. agent describe these and what the tactical usage of them is besides them being cages. Yeah. Because you can't lie. But we also have basketball courts and schools and everything else. Yeah, They're yeah, surrounded yeah. by fences as well. Yeah. And those cages too. Yeah. So technically call them that. Keeps people in. It keeps people separated yeah. in and they can view. I can have one officer that can look through three cages. So mm -hmm. I guess my, my, the only thing... Uh, but it is. It's yeah, just, and it's, I see it. I understand it. And that's why I'll use the term cage because it is what it is. Yeah, um, but let's not forget that. No, the, and, is, and I, is usage. Look, you know, if we're talking about prisoners of war, we're talking about, hey, look, you know, we've got riots in the city. Like, I can understand having that purpose, but when you're, when you're putting, you know, a two-year-old child, and I mean, do we not have, I mean, you know, we're converting, I mean, from what I understand, we're taking a Walmart and we convert it into this, into these, you know, process centers, whatever, detention centers, you know, can we not take that Walmart and, and, and you know, spruce it up a little bit, you know, can we not have like some, you know, it just seems like it just, the, the environment for that. For the that, sheer numbers of it though, and the money. 20, yeah. I mean, we're looking at thousands of kids here, thousands of adults, and 20, I think 2,500 uh, children, I believe right now. How many? 2,500. 2,500 children. Now, a lot of those kids came, came unaccompanied, unaccompanied, excuse me, mm -hmm. and they were already in the country. The way asylum's treated is different than crossing yep. the border. This Trump policy was, once you're in, you're breaking the law. Can we yep. agree? And uh, if you're breaking the law, it's a different process. If you're asking for asylum, there's nine consulates on the way through Mexico yep. that you can stop in. And then whatever country of origin, you can stop in those as well. Or you can stop at uh, entry points. Yep. Mm -hmm. But once you're in, it's an arrest. Trump yep. has changed his policy, has not changed the law. It's a policy that he changed it from a... He had the, civil process yeah. to mm -hmm. a criminal process, yeah. and he had, the, and that was a decision that he made. And then it was, uh, and this option was available to him, and it was something that previous presidents had used, um, you know. And I, and I get the sense, though, that, and kind of going back on that theme of leadership, I think, you know, a, a good leader knows when it's appropriate to use the full force of the law, and when it's appropriate to to show mercy. And well, he his his back plan was is that uh, if you see a bad law. A way to get it changed <laughs> is to limited. enforce it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and it makes sense. Laugh, cry, whatever. I, like I started this off with, I don't like something that's going to hurt children. Mm -hmm. I don't like them being used as political pawns in anything. Mm -hmm. I've seen many, many, many mm -hmm. on the other side, let's just say school shootings or whatever, yeah. use it for their agenda. All right. Well, you mentioned, you're saying 92, 91 with Clinton. This goes back all the way to 1977. 
We've had a three-prong attack with the defense of border, border security uh, guest program, but also the overall legalization for, for immigrants coming to this country. I was just looking at so, the, the, the uh, migration, the launch point where mm -hmm. the numbers spiked. Is that right. was at that Immigration Act night? Well, that has well a way of solving this migration issue. Immigration issue has been going on since 1977. Oh yes. So everybody's to blame. We're all together on this. Every elected it's many official. Many years. Of, exactly. Of so, political football, as Helena yeah. likes to call it. Right. So with all of it, you're talking right from the get-go policy. What is the policy? What is the process? Because you said you're first generation. How many years did it take for your parents to legally, from once they stepped into this country, how many years? I, I, I wouldn't even begin to guess. It changed quite a bit, uh, yeah. but you're looking at five to six years. Yeah. So someone who is, quote, unquote, white coming from Canada, $10,000 investment, 11 different hoops they have to jump through through five to six years. So we already have a process, which is a long, lengthy process. So we yeah. have something in place that most people are uneducated about. But then you got literally 13 million legal immigrants and 11 million illegal immigrants. And you got to ask yourself, who are hiring all these people? Oh, I'm all for it, man. Hmm? These for jobs it? down at the dock, hmm? where you're getting paid 13 14 an hour, mm -hmm. those are 20 $30 an hour jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. Right. And these, you know, I don't want to say any names, but, you know, these guys that are getting in trouble down there mm -hmm. uh, making millions of dollars. On the backs of this, you know, and it's one guy and his family. So, and some of them are doing a little extra too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so right. I mm -hmm. mean, we're looking at we're looking at an issue where greed is taking yeah. is is causing it, you mm -hmm. know. But then we're also being greedy and, and lazy about it because the prices of goods are down. There you go. You so, know. Right. So it's like we're so, part to blame too, mm -hmm. you know, because you start telling me I got to pay X amount for per pound for fish. Well, my fish and chips is now twenty dollars mm. rather than ten bucks. Right. I'm going to sit there and bellyache mm -hmm. as you, yeah, as yeah, you. Yeah. But that's the that's the reality of the of the, of the issue here. Mm -hmm. So it's not overnight. You're looking at like the state of Texas. Nine percent of the working population is illegal immigration labor. The unemployment level is four point five percent. So right off the bat, if you let that nine percent workforce out of the country. The economy collapses because basically the 4.5 percent could have gone to the same temp agency to find those jobs that will work for independent farmers. They don't want. They don't want to. So technically, you're looking at the price of services and goods going through the roof if you would hire those people who, at the second place, don't want the, who don't want the work. Because that's the thing. If you go to any temp agency, you could be a legal immigrant going to a temp agency. They will find you work. There are uh, containers companies. You go to, like you mentioned, the docks. Yeah. They'll hire you at ten dollars, twelve dollars an hour, making two fifty a week after taxes. So what kid out of high school, college wants that job? And that's the thing, you have to ask yourself, are the jobs available? Yes, but there are quite a large population that don't want that work. And that's part where you have to basically change the culture of the work environment. You need to basically, you can't take 11 million people out of the, out of the economy that are currently paying taxes. No. By doing that, then you mentioned strawberries and vegetables. You're paying now five times the price because now you have to hire somebody at minimum wage if they can find that worker that's willing to work in those conditions. So we're talking about something since 1977. It's not going to be an overnight easy, easy answer. You know He's what? pushing the envelope to make yeah. it. But he's also using it for his wall, which, which everybody is not a whole wall. Bill Clinton built six, 600 miles of wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about border agents, we're talking about drones, we're talking about sensors. Yeah. It's not just this wall that everybody, like, you know, people, you should actually look into what the wall is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's like, it's a different, it's, you know, it's different parts. Is it worth $50 billion? I don't know. A lot of, it's, a lot of it has to do with the manpower, vehicles, drones, all that stuff. You know, go buy a drone. Mm -hmm. But what it's not just a piece of concrete, you know what I mean? Those things oh, yeah. are freaking expensive. If you look at an F-18, it's, you know, $22 million. Oh, yeah. Some of these drones they're using are literally like five, six million dollars each. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it. Oh, no. You're not just looking at a brick and mortar wall. Like, yeah. that's what I'm saying when people mm -hmm. say, and Sorry, no, yeah. but is anything the government builds a good price? Lately? No. You do know? You, do you remember the Secure Fence Act of 2006 under Bush? This was a fence that they said in 2007 is obsolete. Yeah, you know, and that's show, how it is. Penn and Teller had a show on Showtime. Do you remember that? And they yeah. said, well, I've got to hire Mexican labor to build the walls just to save some money. It took them an hour to build it and five minutes to go over it. Yeah. So like I said, now we're investing the same, the same fence that uh, Trump, uh, Trump supported the budget last year. It's the same type of fence. It's not a wall. It's not a 30-foot yeah. Israeli wall. Well, he's wall. got this other type of uh, wall that he had tested out in San Diego yeah. that actually had some special forces go out and try to scale yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a dog and pony show, but I think it may work. I don't know. Well, do we need border security? Yes. But 85% of the illegals coming to this country are not coming south of the border. And you can talk to the World Bank on their data, but also the State Department's yeah, data. But so, yeah, I mean, yeah. well, you're looking at drugs are trafficked from that area. Most oh, yeah. of our drugs come from that area. I don't know a single our human Democrat. trafficking 
I don't know a single right? Democrat who's for supporting any of the criminals. If there is a drug dealer, murderer, well, any of that. There a couple of people that were MS-13 fans a couple of weeks ago. They're, they're you would think they were MS-13 fans the way they, oh, no. they like, that's, they, they well, talking, the hell out of that. You're talking legal immigration, illegal immigrants, and then also criminals. These are three different type of people. So if, Absolutely. You have, if you're an illegal with five speeding tickets or an illegal that's drug trafficking for the well, cartels. You are a criminal if you're here illegally. So let's just call it what it well, is. Trump well, now, now, now it is, yeah, right. criminal. Let's just call it what it is. This, uh, you're breaking mm -hmm. the law. But at the same time, I've talked to He didn't make that law up either. But, but at the same time, you know, and I, I guess I wonder if it's, it's, it's possible to kind of, you know, there's so much of like, you know, illegal immigrants and so on. And, and yet at the same time, when you think about what their story is, when you think about these are, you know, individuals, men, women, children that are, you know, trekking across thousands of miles, braving the elements, you know, for, for the promise of a better life, right? Isn't that the story of America? Like whether it's your parents, it is, but it's or, Ellis Island getting processed. Yeah, no, absolutely, right. right? But so <laughs> it's not, it's so, not, it's not so, jumping in El Paso right, and no, saying yeah. I'm here. <laughs> so I mean, but, but <laughs> like, that's uh, not the story of America. Let's you know, not make and, it so, so I've, I, you know, I, I, on my mother's side, we can you know trace it back to before the revolution, I mean, and then my father's side, German immigrants coming over in the early 19th, uh, 20th century, right, and, and Ellis Island, right. Um, it did seem like it was it, it was quite a bit. Simpler at that time, and it wasn't. Uh, um, oh, everything was. You know, and so I just, I, 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 I like. I was just talking sure. about let's cut government back twenty minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm not, I, I'm not. But what's the number, Chris? What, what do you? Where mean? are we at? We're gonna let hundred million South Americans in here? No, no. I mean, I, and I, you know, and I, what do I we think, do? Um, All right, so we hit hundred million. Yeah, yeah. What's next? I, I don't have the answer. You know, I don't. Have to, I, I think it, it becomes difficult because you know, I think even in the most progressive uh, countries, you know, we saw this in Germany, we saw this in Sweden, saying like hey, we have to do something with these Syrian refugees, with these. And now they're having uh, issues. It's right? daily. And, we're having a million immigrants come into Sweden, and and that you know, for a country the size of Sweden, we're talking what was it, uh, you know, six, fourteen million or something. You know, I, I don't, I yeah. don't know the population. Of Sweden no, it's, to, it's but I mean, that's they a have an issue out there. Yeah, and yeah, the Italians right now are going crazy. It, it, it changes the, the 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 dynamics of that country, um, and the nationalism is on a rise out in Europe. After yeah, absolutely, and it's and it's, it's on the it's on the rise here too. Um, absolutely, and, and I think and I and I think that I'm glad that you're saying that because I think it's also important to kind of distinguish between nationalism and patriotism. Patriotism is right? awesome. Yeah. And there's a fine line. It's almost like lead and gold. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, love and hate. Yeah. And, I don't uh, know. I, but I don't have the answer. I don't know how many. But um, what's the number? I, I don't know. We have I mean, to because, all right, yeah, yeah, we got let these guys out. in. Let these kids in. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. We do it again tomorrow. Then we do it again tomorrow. Then 20 years from now, we're at 100 million. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Then our unemployment rate's at 9.7 rather than 4.5. Then we go through a recession where shit's really bad. But we've just now, like, what, we have yeah. to figure it out. But, 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 and maybe by this anger and this, maybe that's Trump's plan. I don't think his plan is to just throw kids in cages. You think that's his end game? I, What's I, his end game? I, I'm think not, about I'm it not, that way. I'm not convinced that Trump has thought this all the way through. Like, I, like I, Trump so seems what's like it, what's an individual he doing kind then? of just shoots from the hip. I talked to this guy last year. Oh, this time I'm like, you know, what the hell did he come yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. Like but, so I not... mean, he sees this. What's his end game? This executive order he signed yesterday, mm -hmm. he knew Reno versus Flores, 2015, he's got a million yeah. lawyers working for him. Yeah. Right. That executive order was, he should have wrote it on toilet paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done. Yeah. ACLU's already going to, yeah. you can't do it. Mm -hmm. You can't legislate from the pulpit. It's not how it works. Right. You know, he knew that. So why did he do it? Optics? So, so now, he, now the ball's back in legislature. Let, uh, well, I think I even think that the optics when you have you know Trump sitting there and then he, he turns it over to the vice president to really kind of explain more the, the details of that. I don't know that the optics which work very well. Um, I, I think I, they I try think to get. Was, I, yeah, think I think they're trying to a, limit a, him talking about it. Yeah, this was a PR disaster um, yeah. for the administration. I mean, when you have you know House Republicans coming out and saying no. Um, oh, yeah. Mova, Josh, uh, kill me. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I guess we were trying to find a number, right? So yeah. you think there's 330 million Americans? I'm on this one, right? Josh. Um, yeah. What percentage of the population can we can we sustain as as, as being first generation immigrants before they you know start to assimilate? Right. Um, and, and that and that is something, right? So. So you um, do believe that people should assimilate? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think I America. Yeah, I think America is is great because we have you know. I, oh my God! Like I I never knew like. Like Portuguese people from my like Idaho doesn't have Portuguese people, right? I mean, then you move to New Bedford, it's like this is awesome. All right, this is like part I of got this, angry I with my grandmother. I brought it up last week with Elena. My grandmother's like eighty eight years old, telling my wife from Kentucky that she's got to learn Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I mean, dude, you've been in America forty years. No, yeah, yeah. you need to learn English. No, no, better, and, you know? and, I, and I think that that uh, you know, I, 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 
if you want to succeed in this in this country, and if you want to succeed in the uh, globally, knowing English is, is critical. So I don't actually have a problem with with, uh, and I don't know how Frank feels. I'm you know on this issue, I don't have a problem saying, you know, let's make English a national language, right? But at the same time, I also think that we're we're providing our children with more advantages if they're bilingual and multi multilingual, and we're not doing a very good job doing that either. Um, you know, so uh, you know, but I, I I do think that assimilation. Is important. Like, bring your culture, bring your customs, bring your traditions. Let's spice up the the, the American life, that flavor. Uh, but at the same time, like, you should come here and respect the democratic process. You should respect human rights. You should respect. Like, you should have these. But that starts at the door. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. If yeah, you kick so in my door and come to my house and ask me for a drink, I might shoot you. Yeah, but, uh, but if you come in and you knock and you say, "Hey, man, I need a drink." Right, yeah, no. Let me meet you mm -hmm. at the porch. I'll get you a drink. You understand? Yeah, they no, have I, to I, take I, ownership. I, I totally you, get that. They have to take ownership in what they're doing. Like that's a but, perfect analogy. I go to your house yeah. and I stop banging on your door, no, climbing through your damn out, window. Right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna hit me with a bat. No, absolutely. But and, if and, I come to you and say, "Chris, I'm thirsty, man. My country right now, I'm getting beat, persecuted. Mm -hmm. I need your help." Right. So, but, but so maybe we can start with streamlining the asylum process. Well, look what we do. And then put a cap. But we're making that harder now. Right, because I now, think he's, sometimes you gotta go through the, you gotta go through the mud to get to the yeah right you know yeah. to get, what are you gonna say go through the mud to get to what get to the to the gold you know yeah. well, you look I, at I'm gonna try to I was trying to clean it up you look I at what really, we did I, mean, I want my kid to Google the show and not hear a bunch of curse <laughs> no words. it's a, good, a lot of good sound bites tonight here <laughs> but you did something under the Obama administration with the Republican Congress we had the country of Honduras Mexico has an immigration problem we have people from Venezuela and uh, Argentina and Honduras yeah. going into Mexico so Obama uh, gave 25 million to Mexico to build a wall on the southern border right. Well, they also invested $10 million in a community program in Honduras, which a lot of people don't know about. If you Google this, there's been TED Talks, it's on Vox and, uh, and Vice, that uh, there is Honduras crime and immigration uh, to America dropped by 50% in five years because it actually created a community base to actually work with the cartels down there. Not to work with them, but to work against them. So investing in other countries, and not just much America first, it is America's interest to actually educate, influence, and invest. We do spend hundreds oh, and hundreds of billions of and, dollars. And we benefit from other nations right. down oh, no, not, Central there, and South America. There's a lot of money going to waste. You look at money, hundreds we, of millions it, going down to Haiti. I'm 100% with growing them. 100%. If, if you find, well, we're doing that. How do we find the so way to do it? Right, 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 it's, it's like a printing press in here in Bristol County. <laughs> 18 years, we're investing $90,000 a year. Where's the benefit of it? So if you're giving over billions of dollars to a country like Haiti and wondering, okay, we're giving it to dictators and what are they doing with it? Are they giving it to the people? But other countries, we have actually had success. You see what's happening, what Obama did with Brazil. And investing in that uh, infrastructure, you got people going down to Brazil as opposed to coming here. So there's ways of investing in globally, which I feel right now we're going in an opposite direction. And I, I'd actually say too with that, the USA, right? It, it, there's I, a lot of people look at it and say, oh, we're just you know, it's just the liberal saps that are giving money out to the. And well, you know, except the the aid, the military that we give to the Israeli government that they then spend giving back to Lockheed Martin um, right. and other American uh, you know businesses, that that counts as as as, as foreign aid. Right, and really, what it is is a scam to basically line the pockets of of, uh, of American businesses. That's two billion dollars a year. I, you know, that's a whole nother subject. <laughs> <laughs> They're all connected. Chris, whole so. nother subject. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Eight sixteen. My messages aren't going through to you, Josh. I typed. You just said here. Oh, it's not going through. I don't know if is you want to send me a message. Quick. Can I get another minute? Yeah, give you one minute. All right, one, one minute. minute. Uh, final word, Frank. On what's your fix? What's my fix? For this. Oh, for a bunch of guys chopping it up. What do you think, what do you think should happen? Who, who's at fault? I know you said it can't happen overnight, but where mm -hmm. do we start? We're all in the same boat. What's the right answer? You mentioned, okay, let's keep throwing money at it as opposed to what's the benefit? How in the, in the long run, 10 years from now, the next generation, so when your son is taking care of us, what kind of country are we leaving them? What kind of world are we He's leaving 15 them? At 10 years from now. He's got five, yeah, three years to be out here. Yeah, we'll, right. we'll be in deep trouble. So pe people are looking for common sense politics at the national level and local level. What are you doing for the school? What are you doing for my roads? What are you doing for national security? Um, I think people are tired of hearing politicians talking about the guy they met in the Midwest who's a struggling farmer. They want to say, here's the problem, here's the solution. And it may not be the, the popular. Like they ask yourself, if you want to hear the truth or hear something that sounds really good. I think people want to hear the truth now. I'm with you. Term looms as part of the truth. Mm -hmm. How about you, Chris? Yeah, you know, on this, it's 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 a tough issue because you know there's there's a part of me that is that kind of bleeding heart liberal that wants to yeah come here you know we'll we'll, we'll take care of it but at the same time we can't 
we can't bring the entire world's population here. We can't bring Latin America here. We just don't have the resources for that. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of, uh, you know, promising programs, as, as Frank had, uh, had discussed in, in Honduras. And uh, my soccer coach in college was from Honduras. He'd tell me just these horrible stories. You know, we'd complain about the, the, the field conditions. He'd be like, no, let me tell you, we play broken glass. And you're like, oh, my God, you know. Um, you know, I, I think we, we need to start thinking outside of the box on some of this, right? Like a, a, a wall, a wall is good until they, they jump over and dig under it, right? So let's think about like, why are they coming here in the first place, right? What, what's so terrible there? Like, and is there anything we can do that? Because I mean, when we're talking about these figures, 50 billion, 80 billion dollars to build this wall, if we invest that money, um, and not only, you know, maybe some programs here to help out, but you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it is expanding uh, foreign aid and doing it, doing it actually so it, it benefits, I, I don't know. Right? Is it possible to spend a little money, more money on someone else to, and gives us a bigger advantage? I'm yeah. all for growing them. Yeah, I don't but know. We um, also do have to protect home, too. Yeah, no, I, I and this is, I, I, don't, know. I, I, don't, I don't I don't have the answer. You I mean, can't what, just leave what's, the border. What's I your mean, answer? You know, Canada right now. They need people. They want they want immigrants. And they, no, they're shut, they're slowing down. Well, they, 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 they had this they, big yeah. they had this big dog and pony show. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna take them all in. And guess what they're doing now? They're not taking them in, dude. Well, and, and this mm. is this is where kind of with, that's probably as hypocritical as you yeah, can yeah, be yeah. right now as Canada. Well, mm. it, it, with globalization, it's kind of increasingly big about you know not having necessarily secure borders, but but well secure borders, but also being able to kind of what the, the term was like filtered borders, right? So we weren't letting the right people in, right? And that seems to be kind of the approach that Canada was wanting. They, you know, they, they there are programs to incentivize people to move to Canada. You got a you got a, a country that is significantly larger than the U.S. and they've got 35 million people there, right? Um, you know, they got a tenth of our population. Yeah, they got. Um, nobody wants to live in that. Well, <laughs> trying to go down south too. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I, I, I don't. You know, and, and I think that's why it's a tough question. What I didn't get to. You're coming back on whenever you want. You too, man. Many Just times. to chop it up. Uh, I love this. I love having opposing views. Mm -hmm. And um, guys, did you see how that just happened? Myself, Frank, Chris, three different men, three different ideals. We kind of said a bunch of the same stuff. Imagine that. Uh, not all of it we agreed on, but we were kind of in the same building. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You know? And we weren't outside and yeah, arguing. We were respectful. And that's what I want you guys to do. Go online tonight. Remember, you're showing your children, you're showing your nieces, you're showing your neighbors, everything, what you are, what it is. They're watching you. Children are watching us. Children are hearing us. Internet history will not go away. They'll be able to see your comments and what you wrote. I got stuff that I'm not proud of. And uh, I'm trying to make that better. I'm challenging myself and I'm challenging you guys. Be better people, be better role models, so that way uh, we can raise these children the right way. And uh, not 10 years from now, but We'll say 20 when my kid's making decisions for me. Hopefully he makes the right ones and uh, hopefully I helped influence him. And hopefully people like Chris and Frank did the same. Hmm. Big fan of Frank. I didn't know how I'd, I'd like him. I'm being honest with you. <laughs> he you. came on tonight, said the right things, and uh, I thought I was going to go a totally different way, to be honest with you. I was ready really? for it. I saw this big uh, Democratic donkey on his donkey uh, flyer. And and I, said, downhill. I said, damn, we're going to have problems <sighs> tonight. But it worked out. And I'm glad it did because I really, really want to actually talk to him more about the Honduras thing at some other time. We'll, we'll chop it up some other time. Sure. Uh, Josh got to go. I gave him 20 minutes way too late. Thank you, everybody. Tune in next week. We got a great guest, Nick Correa, Rise from the Ashes, making big, big steps in New Bedford, working at the Heron Foundation. Great guest next week. Stay tuned. Big podcast coming up. Myself, Jen Blum. We're going to start a... Uh, Domestic Violence Podcast. Josh and I are working on a project in the jail where we'll be interviewing inmates. Uh, can't let the secret out on that, but it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. Manny DeBrito is going to be on probably 100 times, as he always is. God bless. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank See you. you next week. Thank you.